What's up everybody, Drew right back at it again with another video. Today we're going to be talking about World War 3 because they just came out with a brand new update. This one is called Operation 1 Red Line. What does the Red Line stand for? I have no idea, but if I had to guess, it probably has to be the line between North Korea and South Korea because one of the maps is called DMZ. Just a guess though, because I have no idea. But finally, we're actually getting more content for this game. After four years of playing the same five maps, we finally get something new. Although... I am a bit disappointed because it took them this long to do it, but also just the small amount of content that they gave us. They gave us one big map and one small map, and no, they're not the same, they're completely different. I would have at least thought that they would give us two versions of the two maps, two big maps and two small maps of the same area for the two game modes. Adding two maps to both rotations, Tech Ops and Deathmatch, but no, we just got the two instead of four, which is odd to me because almost every map has a smaller version of itself, so I'm not sure why they didn't decide to do that here. I mean, maybe they are. We'll probably see it later on, but I'm hearing that the next update might not be until September, which, oh my god, if we really have to wait that long, I don't know if this is enough content. I get that this is a free-to-play game, but if you're just not dropping content like hot tamales, it's just not gonna do well. We already kind of saw this with Halo Infinite. The multiplayer is free-to-play, but they didn't drop content until, like, I think November this year? It's like a six-month wait. Actually, it looks like we have a roadmap here. We got the Season 1 content that I kind of just went through, so we're not gonna see another content update until about March, and this is when we're going to see the new game of Fubar, which is an immersive large-scale infantry mode. No idea what this one is about. I don't know if they've ever explained it. Not entirely sure, but uh, new gameplay features and QOL improvements. Got two new factions, the Japanese and Chinese. Or no. There's two of the same flag right here. I'm assuming that this is supposed to be like North Korea and maybe it's just Chinese. I'm not too sure. But Japanese and Chinese. And this is, I believe, Turkey. We got new vehicle type, new operator blueprints, three new weapons, two new strikes, new battle pass, team deathmatch map. So we're getting two different maps for both of these modes here. This looks like they're going to be adding more maps to the full bar mode. Again, I have no idea how this game mode is going to play, so I don't even know if it's going to be good or not. And new gameplay features and QOL improvements. Improvements. I'm not sure what QOL stands for. Quality of life, I assume. And then for Operation 4 here at the end, it looks like they're going to be adding in the Polish forces. New strike type, new operator blueprints, six new weapons. Oh, wow. They're just upping the ante almost every time, huh? Two new strikes, another new battle pass, full bar, and team deathmatch. HVT, tactical, CQB, operation focused squad mode. Oh, there's another mode right there. So we got full bar and HVT, which I don't know what these game modes are. And of course, new gameplay features and quality of life improvements. Okay, so I mean... I feel like I should just wait on this game, wait until like September-ish and then hop back into it, but I don't know. If I don't do anything, then I'll miss out on all these freaking battle passes. So I guess I'm gonna have to grind. No new game modes, which is a crying shame because we've been playing the same game mode since forever at this point. We did get a few new guns, but unfortunately, since this is a game that I don't play that often because of how low the content is, I don't have them unlocked, so I couldn't tell you if they were good or bad. I can at least tell you what they are. The first one is the K2C1 assault rifle. A trusty service rifle carried by South Korean military personnel shoulder fired and loaded with hollow point rounds. This assault rifle will tear through unarmored combatants with surprisingly high hip firing accuracy. It'll give you an edge in the corridors of the Gobi Desert Temple. We'll talk about the maps in just a second. But the second weapon is the QBZ-95 assault rifle. Manufactured in China, this assault rifle's bullpup design places its action and magazine behind the trigger, resulting in a compact, easy to control firearm. While its rate of fire isn't too competitive. Minimal recoil makes it a solid and reliable choice. Interesting. I will take your word for it. Maybe these guns are good. I have no idea, but it definitely sounds interesting. I'm debating on whether or not I want to grind for this stuff because those same maps and same game modes is rough. Okay, so I just played about 15 matches Maybe a little over, I can't remember. And I've come to realize that this game is really stingy when it comes to its leveling system. At the beginning of the video, I was level 20. Then I played 15 matches, and I'm barely level 21. I think I'm close to, like, maybe level 22. And these matches are, like, 20 to 30 minutes long in TAC Ops. Sheesh. I actually don't mind this game, but man, is it a grind. Holy cow. World War III's time to shine for me was, well, really 2018. But in today's age, before Modern Warfare came out, because after, this game just feels like a giant step back for me. In terms of gameplay, gun sounds, map variety, visuals, and overall gunplay and gameplay. Now, I'm not saying that this game needs to compete with a AAA developer, but what I am saying is that after four years, I would have hoped that they would have more than just the five maps and two game modes that we've been playing for four years. I think that this is 
a step in the right direction, but man, are they taking their sweet, sweet time. It's interesting that I say I don't want them to compete with AAA developers, and yet they kind of launched when both Battlefield 5 and 2042 were flopping, so it, it just felt like they were trying to compete with them. But anyways, there's new call-in ordinance, the ZTZ-99 main battle tank, boasting a 125 millimeter caliber gun that can cover any weak points with sheer firepower. This tank is crucial to China's defenses. It can traverse rough terrain and metropolitan areas more easily than other tanks. The tank gameplay in this game is just okay. I wouldn't say that it's like the best in the world, but I mean it gets the job done. The next thing here is the K-21 light infantry fighting vehicle. Its fiberglass chassis makes it light enough to gain a speed advantage, but it's no glass cannon. It's more than capable of combating enemy IFVs and mobile enough to make a quick getaway. Cool. The next one here is the Imugi? I-M-U-G-I? Unarmored aerial vehicle. Your eye in the sky, fly high and fast above proceedings, and use air to surface missiles to catch enemies off guard with powerful ground attacks. Cool, sounds fun, but I'm not entirely sure if you have to unlock these in game or via the battle pass, and yeah, I think this is the first time they've talked about a battle pass, and it just doesn't feel earned. There are definite things that you could unlock in the battle pass, but it's like, do I really want to- I'm, I'm actually curious, how much does it cost? Alright, so it kind of looks like I already have the battle pass unlocked, but if I want to upgrade to the premium battle pass, I have to pay like, I think what essentially is three six dollars for the upgrade to the premium battle pass i think the reason why i own this battle pass is because i'm a veteran of the game i could be wrong though so i'm not entirely sure how much this actually costs it could be in the ballpark of like maybe twenty dollars if i had to guess twenty to thirty dollars maybe i think there's actually quite a bit of decent stuff in here to grind for but i just don't know how worth it it is it looks like it goes up to 51 but if you upgrade it it adds an extra 10 and i think you get this stuff here that's in the beginning and looking at this it's gonna last for a while 72 days how long is that 30 plus 30 60 it's like a little over two months so i don't know how to feel about that i mean it, it doesn't look like there's a lot of bad stuff in here there's just some decent looking stuff i think my problem really is just the content with the game like there just needs to be more but they are taking a step in the right direction with these two maps again i kind of wish that they made it so that both maps have a bigger and smaller version for both of the game modes so that we get a little bit more variety because this is literally all they're adding so yeah talking about the maps i think that they are actually both pretty good i definitely do like the red color of the gobi temple it's just a stark contrast from everything else because everything else just looks kind of gray to me there's only maybe like one green map in smolensk my only issue with it that i really had is that i do feel like the map should be maybe either a little bit tinier or maybe they just add a few more players when you're playing team deathmatch because there were times when i was running around the map and i'm just like where is everybody where is everybody i'm trying to shoot someone and of course they finally come up at the last second i get killed I'm like the corner of my eye but aside from that i think it's a really good map it just needs to either be slightly smaller or they need to add like another player or two but yeah that's how i feel about that map i like it the other map dmz i thought it was a pretty good map it's definitely different from all the other ones but it kind of feels like another smolex to me it's another green map with a little bit of gray visually it looks okay not a bad map so world war 3 is it worth coming back to this game i mean if you're coming from my perspective somebody who's been playing the game since 2018 it's really hard for for me to try to get myself immersed in it when i've been playing the same game modes and same maps since 2018 like them just adding one map to each game modes rotation that to me is brutal i don't even have the new guns unlocked and that's because i'm just not motivated enough to try and unlock them i mean i guess i could hey do right from the future me and a buddy of mine josh v check out his content he always randomly shouts me out so i thought i'd you know give him a shout out we played about three hours on stream of world war three and we only leveled up twice he was level 11 and I was level 21. I was close to 22, so I leveled up just a little bit, got up to 23. Man, this game could be a real grind, not gonna lie. But anyways, so I guess I'm just gonna wait on this one until there's actually another new game mode. Maybe I'll come back, another new game mode or another new map in the rotations. And uh, yeah, I mean, World War 3 is not a bad game. It's just, you know, a game that seriously needs more content in terms of game modes and more maps and all this other stuff. But what do you guys think? Is this a game that you wanna come back to? Let let me know down below with that all being said i want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and uh, yeah i guess i'll catch you in the next one Bye bye